What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to talk about how databases store information in the disk. And that was a question asked by one of you guys and it was a very good question because usually we take things for granted but when you really understand is you feel pity for the computer that does the job for you because oh my god, right? You you appreciate it, right? When you start washing the dishes, you know how hard that job is, right? Stinking dishes, and especially if you like cooked an egg and you forgot the plate for a day, and then you come the next day, and and those uh, the yellow yolk thingy, I don't know what they call them in English, right? The yellow thing they get stuck in the plate, and you need to work really hard. Then then you understand how dishwashing is really hard. Same thing with computer. Computer is not dishwashing per se, but kind of similar i'm rambling i know <laughs> guys the idea here is to understand how databases really store information on disk all right so it is extremely complicated thing and let's talk about it a little bit this i'm, I'm not, they're not going to be any graphics or anything just imagine what it mean guys see follow my hands because that's what i'm going to use here i'm going to make another video detailing when uh with virtual board and all that jazz but here's the thing guys imagine you have a beautiful table it has to be beautiful if it's not a beautiful then you have a problem but if it's a table and let's say for simplicity there's only one field and that field is an integer 32 bit let's say right 32 bit that's what 8 bit 8 bytes bits which is 4 bytes not not 8 <laughs> okay so you have an integer right field so and that's 4 bytes so if i insert one row any number between 1 and 2 billion i guess that's the maximum 32 bit integer you can have right it's going to take 4 bytes of space and we're going to talk about what space really means. So if I insert a row here, four bytes. Insert another row, four bytes. Another row, four bytes. Another row, four bytes. How does it, this really stored in disk, right? And I'm going to explain this in two fashion. How is stored in SSD and how is stored in HDD hard disk drive which is this <laughs> this rotating uh, thingy all right how do you like this sound effect guys huh so yeah so we have a spinning disk and this is the and there's like a little bit different how they uh, store information so let's start with the hard disk drive which is a spinning disk the hard disk drive the it is obviously a platter which is a circle right and there is sectors <laughs> And each sector present information. And each sector has a little bit of a block in it. And these are tagged and identified uniquely for every single sector that is in the hard drive. So you would say, okay, platter number one, track number seven, sector number five, and block number two. And that gives you exactly a block, which is a block of disk that corresponds to number of bytes let's say 512 bytes okay so go back to our logical representation of the table if i insert four bytes this integer like number seven which is four bytes right that's the beautiful thing here if you insert number seven you're gonna reserve four bytes if you insert number two million you're gonna reserve four bytes doesn't matter right because it's all zero zero one zero 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 it's all four bytes and that four bytes will be stored in that given block, okay? And because that block is 512 and you stored four, four bytes, that kind of waste, right? You cannot jump to another block and store another four bytes, right? You have to insert another row. And here's where the database is smart. The database says, wait a second, this table is reserving this block so far and it's gonna put the next four byte the next integer next to that four bytes so it's gonna be 
adjacent to it so they can fit in the same block. And you keep inserting, 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 inserting until that 512 is completely filled, right? And you might say, wait a second, how do I know if I want to pull row number one to go to that block? That's how the database stores stuff. The database will say, okay, row number, there is a, a unique identifier for the row. And it could be that primary key if that field happened to be primary key. So that particular number points, there is metadata in the database that says, hey, this, I want, for example, row number one. Row number one have some information next to it. Sector seven, block eight, track three. And that information is what the database need to actually go to the disk, that circle, ugly mechanical drive and start spinning <laughs> and reads. What does it read? It doesn't read four bytes. It doesn't read eight bytes. It reads the whole goddamn block, which is 512 bytes of memory. And just pull it in memory. And then when we got that, that is slow because that's an IO. But the moment I have all this block, 512, I got row number one. And I got row number two as well by for free. I got row number three and four and five and six and seven until the last row that is in the block. Until row number 128 to be specific, right? What if I want, because 128 is the last block that you can't fit 512 bytes, right? So now what if I want row 129, for example, which is happened to be the value one, one and a half million, right? If you want that, oh, it's not on the block. It's not on the block. It's not on the block. That's another I.O. And they, the database knows this information. It's like, oh, another I.O. Go to that location. That 128 to 129 will say, oh, block number seven. Now it's block number eight. It's the next to it. And then you pull that information, okay? And you might say, are these two blocks near to each other? Could be, could be not, based on how fragmented your data is, but usually they are next to each other. So that's how mechanical drive works in, in a nutshell. So how, this is how they are stored on disk. Comes to beautiful SSDs. SSDs don't have rotating stuff. They don't have sectors. There is no uh, tracks. There is no all of the garbage. There is, however, the idea of blocks still. And block have a size, all right? 512, 1024, whatever, right? And these blocks of memory, okay, have pages. And each page has a size. And, but it's the same thing, right? And instead, the database storing, to go back to the our representation, logical representation, instead of the database storing the track and sector where the actual stuff is, for the SSD, it just stores the block number and the page number. So, oh, row number one is block number 17 and page number eight, right? And it's just pull that information. And when it pulled that page, let's say 512 bytes in that page, we have that beautiful page. We got row number one and two and three and four and five and six right up until row 128 same thing and we didn't talk about rights per se but i'm gonna mention it in a way uh, uh, after a while but yeah so that's the same thing you go back and you read it it's exactly the same however it's 100 200 400 times faster because it's a random access right and instead of spinning wheel it's it's literally you tell the io controller of ssd Go to that particular block, that particular page, and pull it. And when you pull a block, you usually pull all the pages with it. That's, so that's what happens in, um, uh, in an SSD. When you pull a block, you pull all the pages with it as well. Let's go through a write. I want to write to page... We never write to pages, right? As users, we write to rows. It's like, oh, I'm gonna update this row number nine to be for instead of 1.5 million to be 2 million. So what, what do we do here? What does that mean? That translates, first of all, that's row number 
nine. So pull that row. What does it mean? Where is row number nine? Or row number nine in the database, there is metadata that says, or oh, row number nine is block number 302. And then pull that. That's the first thing. And then I'm going to update it. It's 1.5 million. Update that four byte to say 2 million. I'll update it in memory. Now I'm going to write it back. And here's how SSD works. Right, I'm gonna talk about how SSD works, and I'm gonna talk about how uh, the sector works, the the mechanical drive. So for the SSD, when you want to write that block, first of all, you write only the pages in the block, right? So that change, that 1.5 million existing in a page number one, right? But if you write it, you change it to a 2 million, you have to always create a new page. That's how SSD works. So you write a new page and then you flush back that block as a different page to disk, right? And this information reading and writing to the same location, that block in SSD is extremely hurts the SSD feeling, right? SSD have shelf life. And this block, this block writing and reading, the rewriting to be specific, has some le uh, shelf life. And this property in the SSD is called endurance, literally. How many times you can write to the same block before that block is dead. And if that block is dead, we cannot reuse it. That means we just lost space in our SSD. Okay. Take that with the hard disk drive, which is the physical thing. You can literally go back and write to the same location, right? And you can write to it a long time because it's just magnetic, right, idea. So you can write, write to it without any problem because when you write to it, you're gonna write an entire block back. You cannot just write one byte, right? That's that's not how IO controllers work. So, so when you do that, when you change this place, you take that whole block and just flush it back to disk. And SSD, there's limit to how much yeah, how much time you can write to it. But uh, for the hard disk drive, there is no limit to how many times you can write. You can write to the same block. It's okay. Sometimes sectors get corrupt, but that's rarely right it happens compared to SSD. Right. So SSD is faster reading and writing, but have little shelf life, depends on their endurance of the SSD. However, the hard disk drive, they are a little bit slower. They're slow because they are literally uh, abiding by the laws of physics, right? It's not electromagnetic. It's not magnetics and light and, and electricity, right? It's just using literally physical stuff to seek back to a location and then ugh, literally write all these bytes, one zero 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 one zero zero writes all this information to disk, right? That was a little bit of brief introduction about how databases store information to disk, guys. Hard disk drive are different than SSDs. You really need, sometimes you need to understand how this internal works. There are papers and people taking PhDs just discussing how can we squeeze as much performance from SSDs because those guys are the future, obviously. Those no, those guys are not dead, the mechanical drive. We're still using, but these are the performance stuff. But we have noticed with use, the data structures that we have built, B3s to be specific, they kill those SSDs if they are not configured properly. Because what do B3s do? B3s, when you keep inserting stuff, yeah, inserting our SSD love new inserts if you're inserting new stuff that's the best thing you can do because inserting new stuff you're always taking new blocks and you're cha -cha 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 writing to new blocks you're not overriding an existing block so you're not reading something changing it manipulating it, and writing to the same block ssds don't like that because you can only change it so much i'm, I'm when i say so much i'm talking about 500 700 and that's how your ssd uh, cost go up as well, right? The endurance of the SSD, right? So B trees. When we designed this thing, we didn't for we didn't we designed it way back in the 60s and 70s, right? I wasn't born back then, but 
those data structures didn't really think about inserts versus updates. It's like, okay, we'll just insert stuff, right? And here's where the problem of B-tree. B-trees, and again, if it's configured incorrectly, if you keep inserting in your tables, you have a B3 index. And that B3 index has to be large first, not just one integer or primary key. It could be composite of strings and all that stuff. Then, as you insert the B3, the tree will try to grow, right? And when it tries to, when it's about to get imbalanced, the tree will shuffle itself and rebalance itself. And that's the, where it kills the SSD. When you rebalance, what does it mean? Yes, you are inserting into your logical table, you're just appending data, but the index is restructuring itself, right? What is this? What is this? All right, so yeah, so the the, the index is re-updating itself. Oh, this is no longer the root node. This is now the root node. Oh, the child, oh, the child have too many nodes update itself so now it's this is the location it's points to so it re rebalances itself and rebalancing is nothing but updates and when you update in place in ssds oh my god that is the worst thing you can do right and you can do this multiple times and your ssd is gone and when i say oh gone yeah that block is gone and when that block is gone your disk essentially uh, gets smaller because that it can no longer use that block. It needs to use a new block in memory, in memory, in, in disk, and that can slow things down, guys. So that's the idea of SSDs, uh, hard disk drive, and how databases store information there. People are still researching this stuff. So they came up with another data structure, Facebook primarily, I believe. They didn't come up with this data structure. They said, B3s are meh with SSDs, right? So they came up with their own database engine. They called it RocksDB, okay? And they said, we have a lot of use cases where we're writing stuff all the time. And those rebalancing B3s are killing our SSDs shelf life and, and we're throwing SSDs like uh, we don't, like there's no tomorrow. So what do we do? So they used an existing data structure called Log Structured Merge Tree or LSM. Right, LSM trees are append only. They are great for appends, right? So they, it's it's a bit, it works in as levels, right? I'm not gonna go into details, but that's essentially the nutshell. So if you levels, it works at the memory level, and then level zero, level one, level three, and level four. And these levels are keep always inserts. So the index, even if you build an LSM tree index space, then it always just inserts at the end. And that's really nice for SSD. SSD love that. Obviously, you have to have a large SSD too if you're inserting a lot of information. But all right, guys, that was a little bit of a long video talking about how databases store information into the disk, right? Uh, I like to talk without graphics and stuff like that because I might use this as a podcast. And check my podcast, guys, if you're interested. If you want to listen to this while you're in, in a train or your background or you're working out, you can listen to this information without actually looking at and expecting something uh, graphical on the videos. I do make other videos where I use a virtual board, but sometimes I make this uh, more casual, chatty kind of uh, videos as well. All right, guys. Like this video if you like it, dislike it if you don't like it. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome.